just one game behind. The Cyclones in their home gold with the Cardinal trim. It's the road black unis for the Cats, and we are underway from Hilton Coliseum. And the visiting Wildcats control the opening tip. Tell us a little bit more about this Wildcats offense, Chris. I think they're going to want to play fast today, Rich. They're not, you know, breakneck pace type of a team, but they play at the fastest tempo in the league. And Iowa State's going to make them work in a half court. Cam Carter, a surprise first bucket for the youngster. The sophomore out of Louisiana has the first two of the game. Conversely, what do we expect from Iowa State on the offensive end? Long possessions. Let it see both sides of the floor. As T.J. Otzelberger calls it, they've got to be stubborn offensively. And the first foul of the game goes to the man who scored the first bucket of the game. That's on Cam Carter, his first. Check that. It's on Marquise Noel. So Gabe Kalsher will go to the line shooting two, a 77% free throw shooter on the season. He's off to the left on the first one. You know, his story is incredible, though, Rich. I mean, you, you and I had them earlier in the season. He was in the 20s percentage-wise, as we noted off the top. He's in the mid-40s from three so far in this league and wasn't starting for a period early in the season. Really turned it around. He did the kid a lot of credit. Averaging 18 a game in Big 12 play and 14 for his last 26 from beyond the arc in his last four games. Here's Keontae Johnson, one of the best stories in college basketball. Off the mark on his first shot, but it's a Iowa State foul. Well, it's big today. Iowa State really good at turning teams over, and it's not because they're out pressing you. They're just very good in the half court, very physical. That was the issue for Kansas State against TCU. 20 turnovers in that game. Johnson, short. And a foul on Kansas State. We're going the other way. Got to take good care of the ball in the half court. Got to take good shots if you're Kansas State. Even if you want to play in a hurry, play a little bit faster. That Iowa State defense has not allowed more than 70 points in a Big 12 game this year. One of the pleasant surprises on this Iowa State team, their starting point guard freshman, Taman Lipsy. He cuts through the middle of the Kansas State defense. It's Holmes on the baseline. Five to shoot. Grill does. And we'll keep an eye on Caleb Grill, the best three-point shooter on this team. Has a little bit of a bad back. T.J. Otzelberger telling us that they're going to have to monitor his minutes tonight. And if he plays a lot, there's a chance he might not play in Saturday's game on the road against Missouri in the Big 12 SEC Challenge. Some token pressure by the Wildcats, handled by the Cyclones. Here's Lipsy, the freshman, out of Ames. Oshun Oshuni, two feet in the paint, but nowhere to go. Johnson clears. Here's Carter, aggressive to the hole, and he gets fouled, and Cam Carter will go to the line. And that's Kansas State. They play downhill. With Jerome Tang telling us at the shoot-around today, like, we've got to score in the paint. We have to beat Iowa State at the rim. And it starts with plays like that where you get that handoff and you get Cam Carter at an angle, and that's what all these guys, these perimeter guys, particularly Carter and Johnson, and then you bring Desi Sills in off the bench, these guys want the paint. The last words that Jerome Tank spoke to his team at today's shoot-around, whoever lives in the paint will win this game. Cam Carter four, Iowa State one to start off. Carter averaging just 6.4 a game, but he's got the first four for the Cats. Lipsy, straight line drive. Nice touch from the youngster. And it's a nice job catching and going before that help side had a chance to come over. Averaging just 6.7 a game, but he does so many other things. And there's the first bucket of the game for Keontae Johnson. Averaging close to 20 a game in Big 12 play. He is a physical specimen. 
Lipsy. It's Kelsher. Oshuni had it taken away by Johnson. Now Marquise Noel. Playing like a first team All American, let alone a first team All Big 12. But he turns it over, and that's an issue for Kansas State. Or oh, you got length on Noel, the 5 8 guard. Jaron Holmes, the bump and the bucket. There's his team and Lipsy drive, and again, he catches and goes. There's no wasted motion before that help side has a chance to come over. Nice job here, and Noel late to react. And then Jaron Holmes, what a job he does. You know, talk about paint touches. That's a paint touch guy there off of the catch. Nice cut, cut to the front of the rim. And a good start, and it led, of course, Rich, to that trap. They're going to be aggressive with Marquise Noel coming off the ball screens. Two guys on him on that last possession, forcing the turnover. Number one in black gets a lot of freedom on the offensive end from his head coach, Jerome Tang, but he does have a propensity to turn the ball over. Now he's guarded by the bigger Robert Jones. A little mismatch. See if he can try to take advantage of it with seven on the shot clock. He does. Gives it up to Ish Nassoon, and it's blocked. Kasher. And now Trey King, zero and gold on the floor for the first time. Kelsher shows that smooth shooting touch on. And it was well defended. He had to shed the defender with a little, little arm shimmy there to get him off. That's been the game of Kelsher in conference play. Just a confident offensive player. They double team Keontae Johnson into the hands of Noel. Here's Carter again. Cam Carter, have yourself a first few minutes. And a nice job playing out of the double team. Once you see that double coming, the ball's got to move. And it was peppered around the perimeter. Led to that shot by Carter. Kansas State back on top. 9 8. Nice move by Robert Jones. They call him Big Rob Energy. He struggled a bit in Big 12 play. He has. He hasn't played well, but a block on the defensive end to start the game and a good little crafty layup there. Once again, the big man guarding the littlest man on the floor, and Marquise Noel quiets the Hilton crowd. And that's going to be a problem, switching on to him. Because he will shoot that, obviously, but he can also go by. Just a dynamic offensive player. Averaging 22 a game in Big 12 play, along with eight dimes a game, is Marquise Noel. Try to thread the needle to Jones, it's a turnover. Here's Carter in transition. Nice step aside, Cam Carter with a game-high nine points in the first five minutes. And that's what you can't have if you're Iowa State. You cannot allow Kansas State the open floor. You've got to force them to play against your half-court defense and the turnover leading to that. Known more for his defense, but Cam Carter has come alive here in the opening moments for Jerome Tang and company. You said it, Rich. Cam Carter... 4 of 20 from the field. He's done a magnificent job, you know. And there's Jerome Tang in his first season as head coach at Kansas State after spending the previous 19 as the associate head coach to Scott Drew at Baylor. And right now, when you're talking about National Coach of the Year, I think maybe these two are in the top running four. That's a turnover out of the timeout. Kansas State with a four-point lead, 14-10. Keontae Johnson can't add to that with the three-point attempt. And it's a good look. It's a quick look. Obviously, it's the tempo Kansas State wants. Now you got to settle in and play 25 seconds of defense. Five on the shot clock. Man down, Kelsher can't make him pay. Offensive rebound, but it's knocked away. Here comes Noel. And now Desi Sills seeing his first time on the floor, 13 in black. Instant offense off the bench for the Cats. 
Ishmasu catch and release off the mark. Here, wholesale substitutions waiting for Iowa State on the next whistle. Here's Jones. They play off him. Trey King, too strong on the jumper. Noel, a 30-footer. And that's the kind of freedom that we talk about he gets. Well, it is. It, the thing is, he'll make those. And so you can't be surprised when he takes them. Now, that's not one you're going to have to heavy contest. But you made the point, Rich, and we were talking to Jerome Tang about this today because he, he kind of calls it keeping Noel on the tracks. You can't put a guy like that in a box. You can't have rules for Marquise Noel playing the point guard position. You got to let him be creative and give him the freedom to take shots like that last one. Because if you try to put him in a box, you're hindering your team, you're hindering him, and it's just it's not a good situation. Up the line defense by Sills, but Holmes controls. Lipsy for three. And the tap back by the freshman Damarian Watson. A lot of J's in the last few possessions here from Iowa State out of their half court offense. Now go. they go inside. And the block from behind the foul is going to go on Masood. It's a good find. You can't settle, you know, and it's a, it's a good find there on Oshuni, the guy who's given him a real post presence here of late. You go back to that that Portland tournament earlier in the season. They, I think they wanted him, Rich, to be able to score on the block more, and he's starting to do that, becoming more comfortable inside. 15 points, seven boards, three blocks in their last game at Stillwater, albeit in a loss. Oshuni hits the first. The 10th and final SEC Big 12 Challenge comes up Saturday. Five games on ESPN and the app. Auburn and West Virginia tip off the day in Morgantown. That's at noon Eastern, followed by number two Alabama taking on Oklahoma, Arkansas, Baylor, Texas, and Tennessee. And then at six Eastern, five Central, Kansas and Kentucky capping the night at Rupp Arena. And of course, there is another game that's going on. The game that you and I will be calling in Manhattan. The Florida Gators come calling on the Kansas State Wildcats. That will be an emotional scene in Manhattan as Keontae Johnson faces his former team. We'll take a timeout here on the floor. 11.49. Terrific seasons. Noel second in the nation in assists per game. The first thing that jumps out at you is the scoring prowess from number one in black, but he makes his teammates better as well. Half-court pass nearly picked off. Tyke Green on for the first time. Saved it for the Cats. Interesting to see what Jerome Tang has in store with his two best players on the bench. Right. Right. And it's interesting to see how long he keeps them both there. Kalshir for three. Defense leads to offense for the clones, and they're back on top. And not long. Noel and Johnson at the scorer's table now. I think Jerome Tang trying just around the TV timeout to steal a couple minutes. Back-to-back -back turnovers for the Cats. Already our fifth lead change of the game. Kalsher spins. All alone, Watson. Saved by Lipsy in a fresh 20 seconds. Oh, wait, the ball didn't touch the rim, so shot clock is winding down now. Holmes with the ball. Nice job. No panic. Nice job by Jaron Holmes. And a timeout called, a 7-0 run by the Clones, and the Hilton Coliseum is ready to get its roof blown off. And I will tell you, you look at their two losses, Iowa State's two losses in league play to Oklahoma State and Kansas. The common theme is that Jaron Holmes did not play well. Six of 22 from the field combined in both of those eight turnovers. When he plays well, 
this team typically plays well. Well, he has five tonight and two assists already. Off to a good start. That one blocked out of bounds by Oshun Oshuni. One of three active players in Division I basketball with 300 plus career blocks, and he's got another one there. And Nick Tomlin controls it for the Cats. Kansas State struggling offensively. 0 for their last four, two turnovers. Sills make it 0 for 5 for Kansas State. Lipsy, straight line drive. Damon Lipsy has four. And it's a 9-0 run by the Clones. And when that drive comes from the middle third of the floor, there's no help and nobody at the rim because Oshuni was lifted. Sills got into the paint, almost turned it over. Naquan Tomlin with his first bucket, an easy two. You really like Tom. I do. He's a pro. There's no question about it. Just long. You can't teach his body, obviously. New to the game, still learning. I think learning how to work. If he can fall in love with the work, there's no question he's a pro. Kalsher. Off to the right. Offensive rebound. Lipsy. And what a beautiful soft touch off the window. Yeah, that's Jerome Tang today. I said, where's the area you guys got to get better? He said, defensive rebounding. We're a pretty good first shot defense, but we have a hard time. Sometimes we just watch the ball in the air. Johnson off the mark. One and done for the Cats. And you can't turn it over against Iowa State, and you can't give up offensive rebounds. Holmes. You could sense the crowd was ready to go ballistic if that was a make. Instead, it's Noel looking to make it a one possession ball game. Kansas State, the only one lost team in league play in the Big 12. Five to shoot. Noel does. Off the mark, but the follow goes for Kansas State. An and one opportunity for Tyke Green. Well, this is good help by Kalsher to get in on this contest of the shot. 70% of these types of shots fall to the other side of the rim. And a nice job on the back side here by Tyke Green to kind of tip that in. Just a nice job being alert. Tyke Green, a transfer from Stony Brook, played for the Sea Wolves last year. We were second team All-America East and one of four players on this Wildcats roster who went from the Big Apple to the Little Apple. He grew up in Queens, New York, and now he's in Manhattan, Kansas. This is a chance at completing the three-point play. It's a three-point game with Iowa State up. with the shot clock winding down, and that's a defensive stand by the Wildcats, and they needed it. Kansas State ranked fifth in the country, one of the hottest teams in the nation, but they've run into a buzzsaw that's called the Iowa State team. Yeah. You might be asking yourself, what's JVG doing in Ames, Iowa, wearing an Iowa State cap? He and TJ Altsberg would go back a ways. Go back a long ways. Yeah, yeah about 15 years when uh, when Coach Van Gundy was was coming here to visit and uh, TJ Otzelberger, a young assistant and as any good young assistant kept a relationship long term with JVG and uh, so JVG makes his pilgrimages here big Iowa State fan obviously rated the student store as well <laughs> TJ told us and he wasn't joking he said usually all of our practices are closed they're open to one guy and that's Jeff Van Gundy it's a smart move that fouls on Hassan Ward, his first, and that sends Ish Masood to the line. 
And Masood off the mark. It's his first miss from the free throw line all season. Well, on Wednesday, our NBA doubleheader starts in Philly with Joel Embiid and the Sixers hosting Kyrie and the Nets at 7.30. Then John Morant and the Grizzlies take on Steph and the Warriors. Coverage tips with NBA Countdown at 7 on ESPN and the app. I don't think Jeff will be on either of those calls, but he's got a game against with the Mavericks in Dallas. So close enough by where he can stop by and see his buddy TJ Otzelberger in action. That's an Iowa State turnover. Here comes Tomlin. A two ties it. A three gives Kansas State back the lead. Seven minutes to go. And a turnover. Here's Hassan Ward at the other end. SC top 10 caliber from number 24 in gold. Masood, and that's his specialty from the top of the key. And you can't lose him if you're Iowa State. That last turnover, though, that led to the dunk, unacceptable for Marquise Noel. You, it was careless. You cannot make passes like that, one-handed passes on a reversal against this Iowa State defense. They lead to runouts and scores on the other end. One-point game. Kalsher lost it. Now Grill with a hand in his face comes up short. And Johnson snares it for the Cats. Yeah, Grill is not moving right, and every shot he's taken tonight has been well short. That bad back that he injured against Texas a couple games back. Missed most of the second half in their loss at Oklahoma State. And Tomlin gets fouled by Grill. The turnovers have hurt. Kansas State in this in this first half. I mean when they've been able to get a good look they've hit That's a careless pass from a veteran guard like Marquise Noel and a really Solid defensive play just good anticipation just stick your paw in there Maybe he might get a touch and then he wins the race to the ball Speaking of touch some nice touch from the 6'10 junior out of Harlem, New York made Juan Tomlin on that first free throw a 70% free throw shooter ties the game at 23. You talk about a circuitous route to Big 12 basketball. He started out playing as a kid in Rucker Park in Brooklyn, did Naquan Tomlin. And admittedly, in his words, he was a bit of a knucklehead, ran with a tough crowd. He ended up going to a prep school in San Antonio and then found his way to Rochester for his first junior college stop and then went to Chipola in Florida, which is a Juco powerhouse and the rest is history. Jerome Tang heard about him, found about him, found out about him and recruited him to Manhattan, Kansas. Hmm. Nice touch along the baseline by Kalsher. And a nice middle cut there. Get him on the move and then just a nice creativity. What an artistic little float job over the top. Playing with supreme confidence is Gabe Kalsher. And getting the assignment of guarding one of the best offensive players in the league in Marquise Noel. And doing a good job of it. Eight on the shot clock. Johnson surrounded by gold jerseys. And it's a jump ball. It'll be possession arrow, Iowa State. Iowa State is the epitome of team defense. Their defensive habits are outstanding. And I think a lot of it has to do with you have older players and even the transfers coming from programs where, where they were well coached, but it has a lot to do with TJ Otzelberger, an outstanding defensive coach. And that foul is going to go on Camp Carter. You know, Iowa State has been really good with Noel. You know, I said at the top, he is the catalyst. Your game plan has to center around Noel. Not only his points, but what he does for everybody else. When you go back to that Kansas game, you know, his offensive scoring numbers weren't great. But then you look at Desi Sills, who had a, a game of the year for him. Naquan Tomlin had a great game. It's what he does for everybody else that creates havoc. And Iowa State did a nice job with him so far in this game. The officials checking at the scorer's table, only 16 fouls 
or that's what they were checking, but there's actually just five team fouls on Kansas State, so it'll be Iowa State ball out of bounds with 4.40 to go. And every game in the Big 12 is physical, and this one's no different. That's on Keontae Johnson, his first. Well, when we first started talking about this game, when it came up on our respective schedules, Chris, the first thing you said to me was, these are two teams that win in different ways. Yeah. How are those different? Well, Kansas State, it's not that they're not good defensively. They're an offensive team, and I think they're they're good in part. Tough shot. I think they're good in part defensively because of their length and athleticism, and Jerome Tang can coach defense. But they want an open floor. They, they are much more downhill offensively. That's a downhill drive by Keontae Johnson that'll send him to the line. We've talked about Iowa State's defense. It's just so solid, and that, that's how they win. You know, their offense can't lose them games because their defense is going to win them most of them. Johnson held to just two points so far before that free throw goes. And again, after two years away from the game, that scary situation in Tallahassee, Florida, when he was with the Gators back in December of 2020, but he's gotten in fantastic shape in his time in Manhattan and is having an all Big 12 type of a year. Kalsher, hot hand. I mean, that's been the play. It's just that, that pin down that he's curling off of into the lane. 12 for Kalsher, the lead is four for Iowa State. Nice pass from Noel to Johnson underneath. When Noel penetrates, he's penetrating to pass. You've got to stay home and force him to finish over length. Make him be a finisher in the paint. Just three points for Marquise Noel, but already four dimes for the Cats. Five on the shot clock, they lost it. Here comes Kansas State, led by Cam Carter. Off the window from the left side, Cam Carter in double digits with 11. And TJ Otzelberger wants to talk it over with 3.07 to go and a tie ball game in Ames. Oh, that sort of pin down where he's curling off. You know, that one for one is where he had that shot, that floater over the top. And then he's just kind of getting to the middle there off of that pin down, curling and, and taking that comfortable shot for him. Kalsher has 20 points or more in three of the seven Big 12 games. Off to a good start here with a dozen. Now Tame and Lipsy back on the floor with those two fouls for Iowa State. There he is with the ball, three and goal. True freshman. Gives it up to Oshuni. And goes to work in the post. We did not see that early in the season. We certainly didn't see it when he was at St. Bonaventure. Really good footwork. Noel might have gotten away with a travel there. The ball goes out of bounds, and with 12 seconds on the shot clock, it'll stay Wildcat basketball. Johnson, Noel, <laughs> swatted away by Oshuni. Now Lipsy. And they'll reset. Ken Palm has them number 307 in the country in tempo. That was an example of why. And the freshman Watson stepped on the sideline. No, Shuno Shuni, much more aggressive, Rich. 
He took 15 shots in their game against Oklahoma State. I think part of it is T.J. Altselberger encouraging him. They want him to be more aggressive. And then this is what we have seen him do since his time at St. Bonaventure. Great reaction there. Over 1,200 points and over 900 rebounds in his career in those four years at St. Bonaventure. There's Carter having the game of his life with a Baker's dozen already to lead the Cats. Tied at 31. Number five, Kansas State. Number 12, Iowa State. First place in the Big 12 on the line. Johnson clears. A chance for the Cats to go back on top. 120 to go in the first half. And an offensive foul on Keontae Johnson. And that's two on him. You know, with this lineup that Jerome Tang has out there with Masood at the four, it's much more of a spacing lineup. There's more room to drive. But how about that? The big fella sliding his feet. I like the call. And yeah, Johnson just, you know, when he gets downhill, he can really go hard. And a nice defensive play. So Johnson takes a seat with those two fouls coming up on one minute to go in the first half. Kalsha. Five on the shot clock. Working on Masood. Oshuni, no with the left hand. Noel, a chance at a three-point play. Tough. Tough. Mr. New York City with the bucket and the bump. This is the open floor, and this is where you have got to stop the basketball. A lot easier said than done, especially if you pick it up that late. He's really shifty, obviously very quick on his feet. And he's a crafty finisher, Rich. When he gets it up on the board, he's got all the English. That's the New York City you're talking about. Just a really accomplished guard who's got a good feel if he can get it up to that basket. From Harlem, New York, Marquise Noel leading this team in scoring and assists. And the crowd likes that, the missed free throw from Noel. Coming up on 30 seconds to go. Good hands by Tomlin. But it's going to stay Iowa State basketball. Wealth ranked Cyclones find themselves down to 30 seconds to go in the first half. They have not lost in this building this year. 10 and 0 at Hilton Coliseum. Here's Holmes. Five on the shot clock. Watson left alone. And maybe there's a reason why he was left alone. That's his second air ball tonight. Ish Masood whistled for the foul away from the ball. And it's just trying to keep Oshuni off the glass, and it's, you know, you have an air ball that now leads to two free throws. Just not a good play by Masood, but again, he's just trying to keep Oshuni from grabbing the offensive board. Oshuni, a 67% free throw shooter, doesn't get the friendly bounce. And it remains a two-point Wildcats lead. They'll hold for one. Ten seconds to go. Four along the baseline. Noel goes to work. Left hand, no. And we go to break with the Kansas State Wildcats up by two. Fifth-ranked Kansas State is 10-0. When they lead at the half this season, they have a two points. As you mentioned, Chris, they've been held in check. But Cam Carter, the sophomore out of Louisiana by way of Mississippi State, leads them with a baker's dozen. As we get set to start the second half, and it's Kansas State ball in their black uniforms. Lipsy on the floor with those two fouls. Here's Johnson, blocked by Holmes. And there's that help defense. Their weak side is so engaged, and they bring help early. What a defensive play. Nice feed. Grill to Lipsy. And Taman Lipsy has it. No 
Noel, that basket won't count. Foul before the play. Nice cut here by Taman Lipsy. Good scripted play. And just no help underneath, obviously, with, with Oshuni E lifted. And that, that big from Kansas State, you've got to be a little bit more engaged. Lipsy coming off. Assume he's cutting the score. Johnson. Some bully ball. But it's a turnover. And clearly Jerome Tang trying to get Keontae Johnson going. They're putting him on the block, trying to get him involved. And Johnson a little bit frustrated, showing a little bit of emotion here. Just two for seven from the field in the early going. He does have five rebounds. Lipsy working against the five man for Kansas State and Taman Lipsy aggressive on the offensive end. Kansas State switching that top ball screen, and like you said, Rich, Lipsy had the matchup, felt good about it. Yeah, Egiola couldn't check him, and Lipsy got free and just enough airspace to get that bucket. Tough. Here's Noel, tough shot taker and a tough shot maker. It created great space, both with his stop and then used a, that arm just to kind of give a little shimmy. Spin move. We saw that in the first half. This time, Oshun comes up empty. But game high score gives it up in the middle. Egiola turns it over. Kalsher for the lead. And Gabe Kalsher will have to earn it at the free throw line. You know, on the other end, Iowa State can afford to be aggressive and have two guys stay with Noel coming off because Egiola, when he catches it, is not a threat. You know, he's the bailout for Noel when he's doubled. He's thrown it to Egiola at that foul line. And Iowa State is essentially not guarding him. So you're really not burned behind you being aggressive with Noel out of those ball screens. Kalsher makes the first to tie the game at 36. Now Tomlin goes off the floor, 35 in black, and interestingly enough, Keontae Johnson, who was whistled for his third foul, remains on the floor for Jerome Tang. Kalsher two for two. Clones back on top. Noel, nice. what a dish. Egiola, the beneficiary. And that's what he does. He's a rim runner, playoff guy. And that's the damage. He's a passer. When Noel penetrates, he is penetrating to pass. Eight points, six assists for Noel, and now a steal, and he stops and pops from three and comes up empty. That's an earned shot. It is not a good <laughs> shot, though. And another steal. Noel, at the other end, gets blocked. Or, or correct the lesson so quickly. But again, he's such a pest defensively. That's the other impact he makes, Rich, on the floor that we really didn't see in the first half. And it is a foul. He catches him underneath, but a nice challenge there by Oshuni. Marquise Noel, the Division I active career steals leader. He averages three steals a game in Big 12 play, and he's got three of them tonight. The other thing, too, with Noel, because of the number of overtime games Kansas State has played, he's averaging 40 minutes a game in conference play. He never gets tired. I mean, that's the other thing with this with this dude. Kansas both. Kansas State with a three-point lead. And in this game, 
Three points feels like 30. Here's Holmes. Left side drive and one. Jaron Holmes. First bucket of the second half. Jaron Holmes is a paint touch guy. 210 pounds, creates his own angle, able to play through contact. You know, 24 years old. I mean, that's the other thing about this Iowa State roster. He's 24, Oshuni, he's 24, Kalsher's 23. Just a really old team. And then you've got Taman Lipsy, the freshman, who plays like he's 24 years old. By most metrics, Iowa State, the sixth oldest team in Division I basketball in a year and a day and age in basketball where head coaches covet that type of experience. Knotted up at 40. Three and a half minutes gone by in the second half. First place in the Big 12 on the line. Noel hits the deck. Four on the shot clock. And a loose ball goes out of bounds. That's the 10th Kansas State turnover tonight. And they're just playing too fast. You got to calm down. They're playing a small lineup. Well, not anymore. They, Jerome Tang goes to Egiola here. But that, they had a small lineup on the floor. You had theoretically a ball handling lineup. And that Kansas State or Iowa State defense makes you play on your heels. They can get you sped up. You just got to take a deep breath. Holmes again, this time he pulls up and shows the mid-range game. Offensive foul, Kansas State. And now this Hilton Coliseum crowd is starting to come back to life. Well, Jerome Tang didn't like the call, and he's saying that the same thing's happening on the other end. Four minutes gone by, Iowa State has rested away a two-point lead. They trailed by two at the break. Grill. And a kick ball by Egiola. That brings us to our first media timeout of the second half. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Phillips 66, our final four good caliber teams. Man. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised that I, I, I mean this sincerely. I wouldn't be surprised if any of those six made a run to the Final Four. I, I mean, I, th the thing about this league, Rich, there's a high ceiling for, for some of these teams. Yeah. I mean, Baylor is the hottest team in the league right now, playing significantly better. Noel turns it over again. Lipsy for three. First four minutes of the second half, won by the Cyclones, and Jaron Holmes has quarterbacked that. A dozen for him. And they get an extra possession because of another turnover and an offensive rebound. And that one's going to go on Tame and Lipsy, and a little bit of foul trouble creeps into the consciousness of T.J. Otzelberger, his point guard now with three fouls. And Lipsy goes out and zero and goal Trey King, the transfer from East, Eastern Kentucky, comes on the floor. Kalsher always getting the number one scouting report assignment on defense. Johnson. Again, tried to pull his way to the basket, and this time he drew the foul, and now there's a little bit of jawing going on. Well, he's a bully, Keontae Johnson, and they love, Jerome Tang loves putting him at that elbow, little elbow isolation, and just let him go to work. Like I said at the top, he is a physical specimen, 230 pounds, firmly built. And you wonder this about freshmen, about transfers. 
how is their play going to translate in the best league in America? And Keontae Johnson transferring into this league and missing virtually two years of competitive basketball has not missed a beat. No. He's almost tailor-made for, for this league. At 24 and 8 against Kansas, a double-double against Texas. 28 and 9 at Texas. One for two from Johnson. So now Lipsy on the bench, but Jaron Holmes has the last seven. Now make it the last ten for the Iowa State Cyclones. Fifteen for Holmes. Men at the rim, and Robert Jones is going to be called for the foul on Keontae Johnson. Nice cut there, Johnson. Another confrontation at the rim. Jaron Holmes actually not shooting it as well from three in conference play, but he's, he's kind of a what-do-you-need type of a guy. And Desi Sills just late there on the contest. And the foul line becoming an issue. Third straight miss for Keontae Johnson. And you might be wondering, why is fifth-ranked Kansas State down six? This is part of the answer. Yeah, it's a big part. And credit Iowa State. Game plan's been outstanding. You'd love to see Desi Sills do something here. He's got a donut and really has been a non-factor completely. You'd love to see him give him a scoring punch. And the Iowa State scouting report. Coaching staff told their Cyclone players, when Desi Sills plays well, Kansas State plays well. Yeah, he had 24 in that Kansas game. And he supplemented again. I thought Noel played well against Kansas, but his scoring numbers weren't as high. But Sills goes for 24 in that game. It can be really tough, but he runs so hot and cold. Five-point Iowa State lead, chance to make it a one-possession game. Off the back iron, and Trey King comes away with it. So no grill and no lipsy on the floor, both with three fouls for T.J. Otzelberger. That one short, contested three. Here comes Johnson for the Cats. Nice job getting back by Iowa State. Noel guarded by the big man, Jones. Wants to take advantage. Instead, he gives it up to Johnson with 10 on the shot clock. Here's Sills. Johnny on the spot. Desi Sills will go to the line and shoot two. These other guys are going to have to be active. I mean, that's a perfect example of how loaded up Iowa State is when Johnson catches it on that wing. So Desi Sills steps to the line. The Arkansas State transfer. 77% from the strike, but he misses his first. Thursday night on ESPN, college game day, women's basketball tips off our coverage from Thompson Bowling Arena at 7 Eastern. Then, the rivalry that elevated the women's game to the national stage in the 90s resumes yet again. Number 5 UConn taking on Tennessee in Knoxville. The summit will be the place to be on Thursday night. It's one of the matchups of my youth. UConn, Tennessee, going at it. No love loss between Gino and Pat Summit. Iowa State's women's team, top 25 club. And of course, TJ Otzelberger married into women's basketball family. Allison Lacey was a superstar here for three years at Iowa State. Kalsher. Offense feels a little uneven for the clones without Lipsy and Grill on the floor.
And as soon as I say that, they get an easy two from Trey King. What a lift King has given them. Largest lead of the game for Iowa State. And no whistle on the missed dunk. Here's Sills. Short on the three. Good block out by Kalsher. Prevents Tomlin from going after the loose ball. And Iowa State controls up by seven. Trey King has given his team a huge lift. His minutes are going to go up. Played 30 minutes, had 10 and 8 against Oklahoma State since he became eligible. Starting to play well. And in arguably the most physical league in the nation, things are getting a little extra physical as time becomes a fall that this non conference event is played in this month. I think it's great for the sport. The one thing I would say, and I say the same thing about the ACC Big Ten Challenge, or I know that's going away, but we need to set these matchups in season. Because, uh, you know, I want to name names here. There's a few of these matchups that are going to be very lopsided. College basketball needing to adopt a flex schedule like the NFL. Let's go. Here's Kalsher, three on the shot clock. Got it! Gabe's first field goal of the second half. He has 17 to lead all scores. Gabe Kasser, Jaron Holmes have been the leaders that Iowa State has needed today. Carter. He was the story offensively in the first half, and now he's going to get a chance at the free throw line in the second half. I mean, Kalsher and Holmes ha have been studs today to this point in the game. And it's not just their points, it's their presence. I mean, there's an air of confidence about both of these guys. Nice job there, catching a, a watching Noel. You can't stand there and watch Holmes dribble. You've got to follow Kalsher. So much of that scouting rule. Scouting report today for Kansas State, Rich, was what are we going to do with Coucher? You know, they call it a hot. Uh, when I was at Duke, we called it an awareness. But another team's really good player. You have no help responsibility. You don't go to the defensive glass. Your job is that guy. And Noel just getting lost there and losing Gabe Coucher. And that last bucket was courtesy of Jaron Holmes' seventh assist of the game. He scored... 10 of the last 15 for Iowa State and assisted on the other two field goals. He's been invaluable for TJ Altsoberger tonight. Here he is with the ball. Five on the clock. Into King. Lost it. And a shot clock violation says James Breeding. The crowd, surprisingly, does not agree. So here comes Marquise Noel. The ball rolls across the midcourt line. Back door. Justice for two. Nice feed from the big man Tomlin. Big time feed. And that window was tiny to sneak it through there on that backdoor cut. Now nine for Keontae Johnson. The dynamic duel of Noel and Johnson coming to life, if only just a bit, here in the second half. Starting backcourt of Lipsy and Grill set to check in on the next whistle. But they haven't been missed. Jaron Holmes has taken over. And you count it. No, you don't. Where are you Offensive going? foul. Where are you going, Cam Carter? I mean, Kausher lined that thing up for about five seconds as he saw Carter coming, and Carter didn't even attempt to adjust. We saw Shun Oshunayi take a charge earlier in the game. Gabe Kalsher leads this team. That's his 11th charge taken. And that was another point of emphasis for the Iowa State coaching staff. They said, if we take about five or seven charges tonight, we will win this game. 
Now Grill and Lipsy are back. And Cam Carter whistled for his fourth foul. There's just a calming presence to Jaron Holmes and Dave Kalsha. So Iowa State will have the ball on the sideline. And Lipsy will trigger the inbounds. We're halfway through the second half. Iowa State trailed by a deuce at the break, but they're up by eight on fifth-ranked Kansas State. Looking to take over first place in the Big 12. Here's Oshuni. Got the foul on Masood. That's Masood's third. And Oshuni will go to the line. They're just wearing down Kansas State's defense. And it's a cumulative effect. When you make a team play defense, Rich, for 25 seconds of possession and you run good stuff, Iowa State is a is, is a sum of the whole parts offense. You know, Holmes is good, Kals is good. Those guys are by no means pro offensive players. They run really good stuff and they make you defend for a long time. And that's where if you give them offensive rebounds, they're going to make you defend for another 25 seconds. It's just been a really good offensive game plan and good execution today from Iowa State. And T.J. Otzelberger makes no bones about it when he talks about his offense. He says we need someone different every night to step up and give us 17 to 20 points. Tonight they've got 17 from Kalsher and 17 from Holmes. And they've got their largest lead of the game, 10 against the fifth-ranked Wildcats. How does Kansas State respond? With five on the clock, Noel. In amongst the trees, it gets knocked out of bounds, and Kelly Self says it'll stay Kansas State basketball. And That's now weird. Caleb Grill hobbling just a bit. Remember, he has a bad back. Suffered that injury a couple games ago. And to know Caleb Grill is to know what a tough young man he is. If he is being forced to the sidelines, you know he can't feel right. Trainer Vic Miller taking him off to the end of the bench to take a look. Masood, yes, knocks down a three. It's a bailout shot. And he hits those kind of shots. So he's a specialist, a sniper. He's all threes. It was not easy. And again, they definitely has two in the second half. They did a good job against Noel and Johnson in the first half. They've continued to do that. And they've been very deliberate. They've been stubborn offensively with their stuff and they have forced Kansas State to guard so I just think they didn't panic even though they were down two, rich and in two key categories they've been dominant points off turnovers and points in the paint here's Lipsy and Johnson almost turned it over again K-State down by seven just one loss on the season for the Wildcats and Johnson threw it to the other team. Lipsy puts it in spin cycle. Man, is he cool for a teenager or what? There's another three. Jared Holmes has his second one of the night. A game high 20 for number 13 in goal, Jared Holmes. Answer, Kansas State. Marquise Noel. He ain't going down without a fight. Not Marquise Noel. That was a big shot. 13 for the sniper. And Jerome Tang. 
was outside the coach's box, so he gets called. That's a warning. And now it's on. These guys, I mean, it showed you tonight what they're capable of. And not to mention, Holmes has seven assists. I mean, he's also been really good handling the ball. He's done a, a bulk of the ball handling tonight for them. Here's Robert Jones. Drives right, gets fouled. And Robert Jones will go to the line to shoot two. And that's the fourth foul on Ish Masood. Robert Jones, the transfer from Denver, steps to the line. That is an elite mustache. Mustache, chin beard combination. Elite. Well, free throws are not his strong suit. But mustaches are. Yes. And that counts for something. One for two. And a bit of a Bronx cheer from the Hilton Coliseum crowd. He just upped his free throw percentage. Eight points. Cyclones lead. Looking to take down the fifth ranked team in the country. But one more to Masood. Yeah, nice decision. Again, Noel is driving to pass. And a nice extra one there by Sills to hit the better three-point shooter in the suit. They call him Big 12-ish in Manhattan because it's been a totally different ish Masood in Big 12 play than it was in the non-conference. Knocked away. Here comes Noel. Kansas State down just five. No look, Tomlin, and it's a one possession ball game. And again, the maestro Noel just making offense for others. Not a great job there by Jaron Holmes. On the backside, he was the tag guy, came over late. Iowa State calls a timeout as Taman Lipsy lips to the huddle. We'll take a on this rim run right there, just a little late. And you give up a dunk. Good sign for Iowa State. Caleb Grill, number two in gold, back on the floor. Bad back and all. He has three fouls. Lipsy with three. Both playing for TJ Otzelberger in the final six minutes now. With ten on the shot clock. Off the glass, no. Here comes Noel. Just a three-point lead for the Cyclones. Yeah, spread him out. Get back to this ball screen. Noel. The Hezzy and high off the window. A one-point game. 15 for Noel. Said a few minutes ago, he's not going away without a fight. This dude is a competitor. Kalsher, step back. Grill got it. His first bucket of the night. A huge bucket for Caleb Grill. And that foul on Robert Jones is his fourth. It was a huge bucket, particularly after he was limping off the floor a couple minutes ago. Yeah. Not quite Willis Reed, but Iowa State fans love seeing it from Caleb Grill. And a tough shot forced there, but another offensive rebounding lead to an, leads to an extra possession, and it leads to that three. Marquise Noel sitting on 15 points. Now make it 16. Big 12 now on ESPN Plus, a must-have for Big 12 basketball fans. Tuesday night, number nine Kansas and number five K-State square off again, this time at Allen Fieldhouse. Coverage begins at 8 Eastern. Sign up today at ESPNplus.com slash Big 12 now. Of course, basketball fans know that K-State took down Kansas in Manhattan in overtime the last time out.
two-point ball game under five minutes to go. That ball knocked out of bounds. And they're going to call a foul on Noel. Well, Marquise Noel is not quite Trey Young when it comes to points and assists, but he's as good as anybody in this league right now in those two categories. No question. He's one of the five best offensive players in this league. And he's the heart and soul. I mean, Keontae Johnson has had a fantastic season. But the catalyst, the heart and soul of this team, the guy you have to stop if you're an opposing team is Noel. Shooter's touch from Jaron Holmes. He has a game high 21, two off his season high. Noel lacing him up. For the final four minutes and 50 seconds of this heavyweight bout. Too strong to tap out. And it's going to be Kansas State basketball. Now Ish Masood slow to get up. These two top 12 teams trading haymakers inside Hilton Coliseum. And now the crowd is on its feet. Ten on the clock. Noel. Tough two. No. Oshuni the rebound. And Sills called for the foul. He wanted the tie up, but didn't get it. And it's not a good foul. I mean, you allow a team in a one possession game, closing in on four minutes to march 94 feet to take two free shots. And I understand Oshuni is a 66% foul shooter. Nonetheless, Kansas State's defense has been pretty effective over the last couple minutes here. Allow, give it a shot to at least defend. The upside for Kansas State, Iowa State 10th out of 10 teams in the Big 12 in free throw shooting. But Oshuni knocks the first one down. Two for two for the big man. It's not a good foul. It's just two cheap points in a game like this. And points are at a premium tonight. The lob. Tomlin couldn't get to it. Masood, catch and release. Again! Noel would not give up on that play. He almost had a turnover on a bad decision. And like any competitor, he didn't stop playing. His mind stayed in and got to the next play. Nine dimes for Noel. Ish with the swish. Oh. And the finish by Oshuni at the other end. Now we've got some high-level basketball between two of the best teams in the country. Johnson way off the mark. 50-50 ball. And Caleb Grill was... Trying to call timeout. Kelly Self, James Breeding didn't see him. And Keith Kimball said it's a jump ball. But now, Big 12, Chris. And it's been a number of guys over the last few minutes for Iowa State. You know, it's hard to know exactly who T.J. Otzelberger is zeroing in on here. Here's Lipsy left all alone. And not even guarding him. Masood, four fouls. Lipsy in the lane, no. And it's going to stay Iowa State basketball. Well, Lipsy's only taken five threes in conference play, 12 on the season. So it's not what he wants to do, and, and clearly game plan for that. Now Lipsy triggers the inbounds. Coming up on three minutes to go. Here's Oshuni going right at Masood. And off the left. 
suplex on him, big man. It's a tough matchup for Masood with the size, especially when you could spin and go left to your left hand. The follow by Johnson, and he's in double digits. Thirty-eight combined for Marquise Noel and Keontae Johnson. Oh. And a shooting getting the student section fired up. Well, they're riding him. You know, he hits two free throws earlier on that bad foul by Kansas State. Be curious to see how he does here, but they're they're riding him, and nobody's guarding Lipsy. And they're trying to, you know, sort of help down on, on Oshuni. -E. But the window, the passing window that Lipsy has with no one on him. Nice little touch on that one. Shu knocked down the last two free throws. And he misses that one. Playing in his 130th career game. For two, a dozen for Oshuni, and the lead is five for TJ Altelberger Cyclones. Noel, you can't leave him open. And it's good design. They clear out Tomlin. They run him over the top to the other side. It leaves open. It leaves an open side for Noel. Six and nine. And Baylor 32 and 14. Just an outstanding offensive player. He already has three 20 point 10 assist games this season. He's one dime away from another one. And they're putting Tomlin, Jerome Tang, interesting over the last few possessions, putting Tomlin on Lipsy. Why do you think he's doing that? I, because I think he's using him as a helper, and then you can switch onto Oshuni -E like he just did there. Daring Lipsy to shoot the ball. Yeah, you don't have to worry about him as a shooter. Seven on the shot clock. Got to worry about this guy. Holmes. In and out, and somehow knocked in by Oshuni. Oshun Oshuni has scored the last nine Cyclone points. Johnson left alone mm. off the window. That's a Debo move right there. Somebody's got to take up the challenge of Oshuni. And Chris, I don't know if this will equate to a win for Kansas State. But they're the first team in the Big 12 to score more than 70 points against this Cyclones defense. Grill. Tapped out of bounds. And James Green's right there. It's going to stay Iowa State basketball. And again, they're, they're, they're pre-switching to get Tomlin on Oshuni. -E. Tomlin's got to fight him, though, in 61 years. Here's Oshuni. Kalsher. Got it! How many big shots has he hit this year? 19 for Kalsher. Four point Iowa State lead. And Jerome Tang wants to talk it over. So Kansas State out of timeouts, 30. Naquan Tomlin will inbound the ball under their own basket. 18 on the shot clock, 33.3 to go in the game. Bounce pass, nice. Johnson got it. Nicely done. That big body man carves his space, and they love that under out of bounds where he can just kind of duck in off of that crossing action. 
15 and 10 for Keontae Johnson. And TJ Otzelberger calls his final timeout. It was a two point Kansas State lead at halftime. It's a two point item to a free throw or two with 26 seconds left. And for what it's worth, Kansas State first in the conference at free throw percentage. Iowa State, 10. But it's Cyclones ball and a two point lead. Man. Now that's... Immediately they foul Oshun Oshuni. I don't know if that was the design, throwing it into him. So Shuni steps to the line seven for nine from the free throw line tonight Around and out The crowd collectively holding their breath Jeff Van Gundy can't take it no timeouts for Kansas State, so this thing's coming quick. Three-point lead for Iowa State. Shot clock is off. 20 seconds to go. Noel tries for two, comes up short. Lipsy's got it. And Grill gets fouled by Masood. I like the decision by Noel. You got plenty of time in this game. I love trying to extend. So instead of 10.9, there is 11.2 remaining. And Drill hits the first. Two possession ball game now. Does Kansas State go for a three right away? I don't think you need to if yeah. you've got Noel. Like, drive the ball. Get the ball downhill, but you got to go fast. Now you Eight do. Eight seconds. Bad. A foul behind Man. the three-point line. Man. The one thing that Iowa State didn't want to do. And that's the fourth foul on Caleb Grill. Who just moments ago had knocked down two potentially game sealing free throws. You know, sometimes players will just make you scratch your head. I mean, there's nothing. If you're TJ Otzelberger, what can you do? So Noel at the free throw line, 88% on the season, and it's true there. And he's, I, I would miss this second one. But he's got three free throws coming, so if he makes this one, or the, the, he would the, miss the third. Yes. I mean, All right. this, so he's two for two, Chris Patola. Is there an art to missing a free throw on purpose? I don't think so, although... <laughs> I mean, there is. It, it, there's, you know, there are teams that will practice it, but... Again, here, the, the key is the inbounds passer. And you got to catch this thing strong. Caleb Grill was a quarterback in high school in Mays, Kansas. He didn't need a touchdown pass there. He got it inbounds on the little shovel pass to Jaron Holmes. And Holmes will go to the line and try and salt this one away. And that's why I, I would it there just wasn't enough time, Rich. Like, you know, again, you're kind of in that window of do you miss on purpose or not. There's just not enough time left in this game, and if you, you know, you've got Tomlin, if you get, you know, maybe Ejiola back in the game, you got a length around the rim. Iowa State up two. And Holmes makes the first. So the most Kansas State can do is send this game to overtime, but they would need a Jaron Holmes miss at the strike for that to happen. If he makes this one, it's academic.
It's up, and it's good. And number 12, Iowa State, has taken down number five, Kansas State. Don't call it an upset in the Big 12. These were two evenly matched heavyweights that went toe-to-toe -to -toe for 40 minutes.